Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about Lens, which is an open source project that enables us to visualize or give us a UI to our Kubernetes clusters, but also gives us a lot more, more than that around management and the ability to do quite a lot of uh, tasks that you always have to do within kubectl. So first of all, I'm on my Ubuntu laptop. So first of all, we need to get it obviously installed. So sudo snap install lens. And just to put it out there here, it doesn't have to be Linux. It's all also available on Windows and Mac OS. And really the key part to this is that it's going to give you manageability of your Kubernetes clusters from from your workstation and give you a UI to that. Now, the other area is that it doesn't require you to have kubectl locally installed. It will use the, in my understanding, it would use cube, regardless of the version that you've got installed on your on your desktop or on your machine, it will use the the lens version of that cube C, uh, of kubectl. Okay, so I'm going to run this from directly from the terminal so that we get to see some of the errors that come up in the background. But most of them out of the box are going to be around Prometheus. So nothing to worry about. Everything still worked. And I'll set up Prometheus towards the end of the video. So this runs through. It's relatively quick to, to get up and running. And then we get the UI. So I think it's important to, to note as well, like, there's a lot of people that want to still use kubectl, but there's also a lot of people that find it very daunting to have to be thrown into the, the terminal and into the CLI and have to remember all of those weird and wonderful kubectl commands, the kubectl exec and everything that goes with that, kubectl logs, etc. Now, what Lens seems to do is, well, hit the easy button when it comes to navigating your, your Kubernetes cluster. So there we go. We have everything installed but I don't have a cluster locally. So what we want to do here, but we could go add clusters and then we can use our cube config or play paste as plain text. So what I'm going to do very quickly and still keep it on the screen is I'm going to deploy a very quick mini cube cluster and complete like speed through this. And what this is going to be is obviously just a, a plain local Kubernetes deployment. Now lens will still work with all basically all Kubernetes um, distributions. The same people that wrote Lens as the open source project are also behind K0S and obviously also also MK uh, MKE as well. So here I've got now my updated config with our MC hyphen demo cluster. So let's add that into our into our um, Lens. And with that, this takes a couple of seconds to, to actually connect. And like I say, it doesn't matter where you're running Lens. So Lens is multi-platform, but then also it doesn't really matter what the, the Kubernetes distribution or offering is that you're that you're looking to connect to. I have another, I have a Windows machine where I'm connected into my EKS, AKS and GKE cluster. Now, I mentioned around Prometheus errors. We're going to get back to that. And that's why it looks a little bit less colorful at the moment. But you get to start to see that we've got a cluster. We've got our nodes. You see our workloads looks very bleak and bland at the moment because there's nothing there. Um, but ultimately, it starts to give us the, the events and what's happened within that system. So first of all, I'm going to go and deploy a simple Postgres deployment within our environment under Postgres, whatever namespace. And obviously, ideally, I don't want to be using Helm or kubectl or the command line for that matter. So I'm showing you this so that we get the visual. But ultimately, later on in the video, I will show you how we can do that all from within Lens itself. So this is me just trying to find the persistent um, command so that it works with Minikube. And there we go, there we have it. So now let's jump back to Minikube. And if we go down to, if we start going through and let's see our namespaces, you'll see our new Postgres hyphen test. And if you click on that, then we get some instant information about that. Now, namespaces aren't particularly exciting when it comes to additional information. It tells you when it was created and all of that good stuff, but really it's not that exciting. And again, if we jump around, 
obviously we don't see anything because nothing is in that default namespace we can go and look at nodes again we can look at cluster but we haven't deployed anything so we don't see it that segregation away from the default namespace or other namespaces within our cluster and again i just jumped into the nodes just to show that it gives us that information now you could obviously get that from the cli from qttl but it takes a little bit of knowing what that command may be okay back into here again obviously we could go in there and we could edit things related to that we can go and edit our um our namespace here as well so again kubectl edit has that command and if we go up to pods again and we click on this drop down and we've got postgres test and it gives it shows us our up and running container that we have and then again in here this is where we do get a little bit more information so we get the labels but then what we also do is get the init containers and anything related to this um this pod in particular what what images it using and the event log that went with that i'd also point out that this is the first time where i've actually jumped into lens i haven't looked at any of the user guides i've seen a couple of videos on it but really this is my first hands-on so if i'm jumping around a bit apologies for that but it it shows that the usability is 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 on point you saw there that there was the kubectl exec i never remember what i have to actually run to get into my into my container or into my pod um, notice again the Prometheus the the visuals are not up there so you don't see them but I found that the exec is is quite a, a good a good way of visualizing or getting into at least your your pod to maybe run things like um, p p sequel to to manage that to manage that um, that database okay so we're killing it and now we're going to go back to lens now this is where we're going to focus on the application aspect so i mentioned around being able to deploy from within lens and they're using bitnami from a, a helm chart repository which enables us to, to go and deploy many different types of of uh of applications within our within our cluster so for the first um and releases is where you're going to see when you deploy the charts it's obviously where you're going to see those releases for just for demo purposes, I'm just going to deploy Argo CD. So commonly used for CD pipelines, great bit of software, done other videos on Argo CD as well as being able to integrate your backups into Argo CD. So once we hit install, we then get the commands down the bottom. And just to confirm that that Postgres is gone, okay, we're, we're good. We're 10 minutes in. And here we get this is what's going to be installed now i'm going to install it just to the default namespace but you can see here that we could go and create a new namespace and put it into that that is one step that we would have to do there now i'm just going to put it into our default just for demo purposes again so if i do get pods you can see everything's starting to deploy great stuff now let's sort out this prometheus issue or the the errors that we're getting over on the left hand side which will also make lens a little bit more colorful when we when we start to want to see about our resources and if we were looking at bigger wider clusters then we'd probably want want that anyway to be able to have a bit of, a better visual of what's going on okay minimize that let's search for prometheus we can take that top one and we can go through that same process now you could push this to a different one a different namespace i mean rather um however just for the purpose of the demo i'm just going to deploy it to the to its to itself and then again what you're going to start to see is all of these so argo is continuing to deploy and get to its desired state and then you're going to start to see other pods coming up around um prometheus as well there we go and then with that let's not necessarily fix because all in all if i hadn't have gone to this this place up into the into the the cluster and hit settings it would have already fixed it anyway but let's get to it and uh, 
Okay, so now we see our releases and this helps as well because it says that we're deployed. It also gives you the instructions. So how do I access my Prometheus or how do I expose Prometheus so I can have access to it? And those instructions thereafter to be able to join it to other applications or other monitoring or vision observability programs that we may want to link it into. This is where we can also bin off or delete that as well but if we come up to cluster obviously nothing's really running down the bottom if you could see prometheus is is now up and running so if we go over to settings and this is where we can start to see a little bit more about the cluster um we can change what the default namespace is so we wouldn't have the problem that i had before if we wanted to put it into maybe the postgres namespace and you've got different options around what where and what you want to want that to see so let's leave it as auto detect for now and as if by magic everything came up at the right time and you get to see now on the cluster we have our cpu on our nodes we know our cpu and memory and we can see a, a historic version of that as well so you can start to get a lot more information about what our node resources look like as well and now if we drill down into our overview you can see that we have a lot more pods more deployments, more stateful sets, but they're all in a green state. Obviously, if they weren't, then they would be, um, they would not be in that. What we've also got that I don't believe I show is the ability here, if we hit the three dots, is the ability to scale up and scale down your environment, your deployments.